Hi everybody, welcome back to Crafted by Corey. If you are new, I'm Corey, and I'm really happy that you're here. To all my subscribers, thank you so much for your continued support. As always, you guys mean the world to me. I'm really excited about today's video because it is part of Heidi Sambles fall Halloween challenge. So really excited about that. Heidi Sonble from Heidi Sonble DIY. She's a fantastic channel. If you have not already checked her out, you want to make sure that you do that. There will be a link to her channel and also a link to the playlist in the description box. So be sure to check all of that out. I also am going to have a couple of really fun things uh, during the video today. In addition to the crafts themselves, but I've got an announcement and also a really great shout out that I'm happy to share. So make sure that you watch through to the end. Give me a big thumbs up. If you have not already subscribed, please hit that subscription button and be sure you hit that little bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So here we go with DIY number one. So if you remember this project from last week, we are going to be doing something with the back. And here is the inspiration picture, $34.99 at Wayfair, you guys. For you and me, it is free if you did last week's project. If you missed last week's project, I will make sure that I link it in the description box so that you can uh, go ahead and take a look at how we did this. So laying our little pumpkins down with their backsides up, and uh, we are going to actually use this Sharpie paint marker in black. Super simple project, you guys. Hardly can even call it a DIY. Most of the work is already done but I am going to draw out my B O O and then I'm going to embellish it a little bit with some other little spooky critters with spider webs and our little spider friends. This is the kind of project that you can embellish as little or as much as you want. I'm sticking pretty closely to the inspiration picture. Uh, I did do it a little bit different in some respects because, you know, it's not going to be exact. And I embellished it to the extent that I wanted it to. You might have noticed in the inspiration picture there was a fourth little block for an exclamation point. I did not include the exclamation point here because I only had the three little pumpkins. You could certainly make a fourth pumpkin if you wanted to. There's no reason why you couldn't do that. I just didn't personally feel like it was necessary for me to get the end result that uh, I was looking for. So this is the way that I chose to do it. So now I'm going back in and just thickening up my letters. And I'll be speeding this along for you in just a moment. But really happy you're all here. This again is part of Heidi Sonville's a challenge for fall and Halloween. I hope that you'll take some time to take a look at the playlist because there are a lot of other crafters who participate in Heidi's challenges and she's just wonderful. So if you haven't already, you'll want to check out Heidi's channel as well. She is super supportive of the crafting community and absolutely one of my favorite YouTubers in, uh, in crafting. spider webs and there you have it what do you think 
Let me know in the comments if you think you might attempt this one. This is really pretty simple and I think it is super, super cute. Give me a big thumbs up if you like it. So here we go with DIY number two. I have an inspiration photo for this one as well. Check out the price on this, you guys, $48.99 at Wayfair. I'm using a Dollar Tree pumpkin sign. I'm also gonna be using some Waverly, oh, sorry about that, some craft paper, and then some Waverly chalk paint in Elephant, and a white Sharpie marker. That's all you'll need for this. So I'm gonna start out by removing the embellishments on the sign. That little metal leaf, you guys, was stuck on there good. I was trying to use my little Dollar Tree spatula, putty knife, whatever you want to call it, uh, to take that up, and that little thing was not budging. So brought out the, the heat gun, heated up that glue that was securing it in place, and then I was able to get my putty knife under there and pop it off. It definitely took a little bit of effort, but I managed, so... There we go. And then I also removed the hanger. So on the back side of this, where it was already nice and smooth, I am applying a coat of elephant chalk paint. And as I was applying this, I really felt like it was a little bit too, I don't wanna say dull, but it was just a little too flat for my liking and the vision that I had in my head. So as I was painting this, I was thinking about what I might do to give it a little bit more of the depth and dimension that I was looking for. So I ended up going back in with some silver lining chalk paint that you'll see in just a minute. Of course I have to use, there's my silver lining. Of course I have to use my heat tool because I have no patience, but using a chippy brush from the Dollar Tree as well, I, you might have seen me on my little um, paper there, parchment paper. I love the parchment paper, you guys, because my jobs don't stick to it. The paint, as it dries, it doesn't end up sticking the way that it might with craft paper or other stuff. Um, so went back, wiped off most of the paint on my parchment paper, and then just dry brushing across my pumpkin and going all in the same direction, just going horizontally across the pumpkin. So now I'm taking both oatmeal and java chalk paints. These are both by Folk Art. And I'm going to use these to just give that little stem some interest and dimension. So starting off, as you can see, with the java, and I'm going to kind of give it the shape that I'd like. And then while it's still wet, I'm going to be coming in with the oatmeal. So you saw me kind of dabbing it off on my parchment paper again. I just wanted to make sure I had enough glue, glue, oh my goodness, enough paint because I didn't want to be sticking brown paint in my oatmeal uh, lid, if you will. I don't know why I'm still holding the lid, security blanket, I don't know, <laughs> moral support. Um, but I just went back and forth with the two different colors until I got the stem looking the way I wanted it. So here I'm coming in with the white paint marker. You could probably do this with a chalk paint marker as well. I don't see why not. You could probably do this with chalkboard paint also as your background if you like that and then just uh, season your chalkboard with the white and that would give it that dimension that I was looking for as well. Now, I forgot that the original said blessing because it was on my phone. I was using my phone to record still. So I wrote blessed. I actually like blessed. So you could do whatever you prefer, but blessed, blessing, I don't know. This is what I ended up doing. Because as uh, Wendy from White Sparrow Living would say, the only thing I retain anymore is water. And she's so right. That's, you know. I think you've heard me say I hit my mid 40s and my brain started kind of oozing out my left ear. Sometimes I don't even know what day it is anymore. But uh, I'm just coming back in now and doing a little bit of a faux calligraphy. Uh, it's just widening or thickening the lines on the downstrokes. And by that, I mean 
any place when you are writing where you would naturally draw down on your letter is where you would come in and make the letter wider. Hopefully that makes sense. But it just helps to make it look a little bit prettier. So there you are. And you guys, if I can do this, anybody can do this because I have terrible handwriting. This is not handwriting, this is hand lettering and it's a lot different. Keep in mind that I have this sped up rather significantly for demonstration purposes. So if you take your time and just give yourself a little patience, you can absolutely do this. And I would encourage you to try, even just practice on a scrap paper. You know, I used to practice with a ballpoint pen even. So I drew my little squiggly lines around and now I'm coming in with Dollar Tree leaves. These were 50 pieces to a pack and they had various different colors. I thought they were really cute. So applying some of those and then I'm getting my raffia together that I'm gonna be tying around my stem. At first I'm gonna be coming in. I'd been debating whether I put the raffia on first or secure the leaves first. And then I finally decided, yeah, let's secure the leaves first. So coming in just with hot glue, gluing down my little leaves. So once those were on, I went to go and tie my raffia on, and then I remembered when I went to flip it over to try to secure it a little bit better, it was sliding up, so I wanted to glue it in the back to secure it, and I'm like, oh, I was going to cover that with craft paper so that it's nice and finished. <laughs> so here I am tracing my pumpkin shape on the craft paper, applying my craft paper, making sure that it's all lined up, and then just gonna glue it down along the perimeter with the hot glue. And this just gives your project a nice finished look. So in case anybody sees it, it just looks nice and finished and professional. I have this just leaning somewhere, so it potentially could have the back showing. So I definitely want that back to look nice and neat. So now coming back in with my raffia and just going to tie a little bow, but first, as I mentioned, securing it at the back with some hot glue so that it doesn't slide up the pumpkin stem on me because there wasn't really anything to hold it there and the stem kind of gets smaller, it tapers as it goes up. So here I am tying it off and then I'm going to trim the little ends on the inspiration picture. They did have much longer raffia stem, like, uh, tails if you will i chose to have mine a little bit shorter but you can do it however you choose but isn't it pretty i think it came out nice so now for my hanger because i did want to have an option to hang it i'm actually using from a little soda container uh just the little tab on there i save these because i like to be able to use them as hangers just hot gluing that down and then coming in with some more hot glue over top to just make sure that it's nice and secure to the project and that's it so here we go with diy number three so i've got the farmer's market calendar super cute from dollar tree you guys and we're going to be using those little images on the back I totally stole this from Sammy at Unicorn Dust Designs. I saw her do this and I had to do it because I thought they were adorable. Using some magnets, some hot glue, some Gorilla Wood glue, the Jenga tumbling box that I showed you there. Also gonna be using that Mod Podge that's off the side that I forgot to show you. But cutting out the images that I wanna use, and you can do whichever images you want, doesn't even have to be this calendar. You can use whatever calendar you want. I'm going to come in first and put all of my Jenga blocks together using some wood glue plus a little bit of hot glue for the immediate bond. The wood glue will give you that really nice long-term bond, but the hot glue allows us to continue working with the project and not having to wait until the wood glue is completely dry. So now I'm going to be trimming up these little images and getting them as close in size to my Jenga block bases as I can without uh, cutting away any of the wording on here. I did have a little bit of overhang, but I was fine with that because I was planning to finish off the edges around my little magnets anyway. So once I had those all cut 
using a brush to apply my Mod Podge, just giving it a really nice, good coat, and then applying my little images. And because this is the back of the calendar, the paperweight was really decent. It was really nice. It was not flimsy at all. So this worked out really well. So once I had all of those on, here, I gotta show you. Aren't they cute? I just love these. I'm so happy that Sammy had this idea because I just, I don't know if I ever would have thought of it. I thought it was just adorable. So now for finishing mine, I'm using jute twine and I'm going to wrap this around. And I started at first on the bottom and then you see me pulling it right off. And I had a thought, I thought, you know, I'm just gonna start at the top and then I'm gonna be doing something on top to cover up my seam. And that way you will never see my seam on any of these little pieces. So just using a little bit of hot glue all the way around as I go. You don't need to have an entire bead of glue for the length of the cord. You just want enough so that it'll secure it on each side as you go around. I did one row, cut it off, and then I did a second row behind it, if you will. So there are two rows of cord on each of these, and I'll show you a closer up um, picture on it in just a little bit. But the reason why I decided to cut it here is that I just wanted it to all lay nice and flat. I knew I was going to be covering up that seam anyway, and I just felt like if I tried to continue around, I wasn't going to get the nice, smooth lines that I was looking to achieve all the way around the piece. So there I am starting going around a second time. And then once that was all done, for my top part, I thought at first I wanted to do a bow, but I started tying the bow and I'm like, you know what, that is just really bulky and proportionately just way too big for these. So ultimately, after trying a couple of different ideas, I just tied a little knot in my jute cord and that was it. I trimmed off the ends so that they weren't hanging over too far. And there you go. So it's literally just tied a knot in the jute cord. And then I'm gonna glue it right on top of my magnet. See there? What do you think? I love these. I think they are absolutely adorable. So once that was done, I went ahead and applied my magnet with some hot glue, and then I repeated it for the rest. So here I'm showing you a little bit closer the whole process so that you can see exactly what I was doing. the image did have a little bit of an overhang around the Jenga block, the raffia does not stick out a whole lot. It's kind of tucked behind the image, if you will. So it, it does extend a little bit beyond the image, but not completely. It is somewhat tucked in behind that image. So it just looks like a really nice finished piece. I was really pleased with how these came out. And I can definitely tell you, I will be making some of these for gifts, you guys. They're super easy, super cute. And you can put any little saying or thought on them. And if you don't have a calendar, you could hand paint these too. You could do so many different things with these. Here they all are once I had them all finished. Aren't they adorable? Give me a big thumbs up. I just love them. So thanks, Sammy. And speaking of Sammy, so 
She and I are going to be co-hosting a DIY challenge. It is an open invite, which means you are all welcome to participate if you'd like to make your own video. It's gonna be going live on Friday, October 2nd, 1 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern time. We have the rules listed here. The main thing is that you've got to decorate at least one pumpkin and then you can make other crafts as you see fit. So we hope you'll join us. Here we go with DIY number four. So for this, I am using a Dollar Tree doormat and I created some stencils on my Silhouette Cameo. And you can use any kind of stencils you want. You could actually end up hand painting this if you wanted to, but I'm gonna get my stencils set. Here we go. Stencils are all on and ready to go. Oh my gourd, you're here. I saw this somewhere, you guys, and I thought it was hysterical and I just had to make one. So I don't remember what store I saw it in. It might've been Joann's or something, but I did see it somewhere. This is not my, my own idea, but I just, I had to copy it because I loved it. So I wasn't real sure how this was gonna work on the mat with painting it. I went ahead and started stenciling and I was trying to be a little bit ginger in the beginning. This is the Oatmeal by Folk Art chalk paint, but I was being a little bit delicate when I first started and then I found that the matte was absorbing a lot of the paint and I wasn't 100% certain, but it did not seem to be spreading. So I was really hopeful that it wasn't going to bleed. So then I got a little bit more aggressive with it and I just went in and, and just kept jabbing it with the, my little uh, makeup sponge. Because again, I like to use these makeup sponges for stenciling. You can cut them to all different sizes. So if you've got things that are a little bit smaller or more intricate, you can cut one down to whatever size you want. And I just find that they work really well. So here we go, first reveal. And yes, we've got sharp lines, sharp edges. I was really pleasantly surprised, I have to say, with how well that came out. So now this is Antique Mustard, I believe, which is also by Folk Art and doing that piece down there. And of course, I've got to reveal it right away because I'm anxious to make sure none of it's bleeding. And this one turned out great too. So now I'm coming in with Fern chalk paint. And as I was doing this, you guys, I was a little concerned that the green wasn't gonna be enough of a contrast with the mat. I wasn't sure if it was gonna pop off enough for us to see. And you'll see here that it really isn't, right? I don't know if you can see it as well on camera here. <clears throat> I guess you can tell a little bit. It just, it was not as vibrant a color as what I needed. So as I'm working on it, I'm kind of thinking about what I'm gonna do and wondering how I might fix it because of course now I've taken off my stencil so that's done. So in the meantime I came in with a paintbrush and I wanted to fill in this little pumpkin, my, my gourd. So using pumpkin chalk paint by Waverly for this and you guys this mat soaks up a lot of paint so it can really handle it and that was why I was saying earlier that you might even be able to hand paint something on here. The paint I was finding does not bleed. It was really actually very easy to work with. It just, it takes a lot. <laughs> so you really have to use quite a bit of paint on this if you want it to show up. But as you can see, I, once I had experienced what I did with the, the pumpkin, I was like, well, maybe this won't be quite so hard. So I came in now with my Irish chalk paint, also home decor by Folk Art. And I'm just going at it with the brush and just going over all my lines. And, you know, it really worked out well. I was afraid that I was going to be going outside of my lines, but I don't know, something with having already had the paint on there. And I, I don't know, it worked out really well for me. So what do you think?
Oh my gorge, you're here. I love it. Give me a big thumbs up. All right, you guys, another thumbs up. I want you to give to Christy from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I've got a big shout out for her. She tried one of the projects from last week and I had let you guys know that I would love to share your project. So Christy, awesome job. Thank you so much for sharing. Everybody give Christy a shout out. Here we go for DIY number five. So for this one, I have a one by two. This is leftover from another project I did a while ago. I picked it up from Home Depot, I think for like a dollar for an eight foot uh, length. I've got a couple of long screws. You see my five arrows from the Dollar Tree. And then this is just a scrap. It was from like a wine box or something my fiance had gotten for a gift a few years ago using my drill. I had um, chosen a drill bit that was going to be the right size for my uh, screws. And I'm going to be screwing that one by two into the other wood scrap, which is gonna serve as my base, because I'm gonna be making a sign here. So I'm gonna be finding the center for my base, and then I'll be drilling some holes in there and securing it with those screws. So here I am drilling, and you guys, I seriously drilled right into my table. So you might want to put a piece of scrap wood underneath if you don't want to have that faux pas like I did. <laughs> but um, yeah, so screwing in my screws to get them started, and then I'm just going to line them up with the holes that are in the uh, one by two because I did line up my base and screw into my one by two as well so everything would get lined up. Now I was being lazy, I didn't countersink these, so I did go back in and add little feet for the project. So I used Jenga blocks and some wood glue and just secured those to the bottom so that everything was nice and secure because otherwise it would have been a little rocky with the screws sticking out on the bottom. Now I'm prepping my arrows and taking out the little um, twine or jute, I'm not exactly sure, I guess it was jute cord on here. And they had these tiny little staples in here and there were two of them on every single end of the, uh, the jute. So that was a little bit of a project, but I managed. So now I've got this um, watered down paint that I had saved from another project and I had used it as a stain and I'm just adding some brown paint to it. The stain was originally a gray. Um, I keep everything when possible, you guys, because why not, right? Waste not, want not. So coming in now and wiping off the excess, look how pretty that wood grain is. So really pleased with this. And I'm doing this to all five. I also did the same thing to my stand. So the base with the upright, the one by two. Everything got this treatment. So once everything was all dry, I came in with the stencils that I made earlier. Now I used AR Christie for uh, these stencils. And I did these again with my Silhouette Cameo. and got them all onto my pieces. And then I'm gonna actually go over these with Mod Podge this time. If you've seen me in the past, I'll usually use the paint color that I'm gonna be using, but obviously we don't have a paint color on these right now. It's all a natural wood tone. So gonna be going over it with the Mod Podge. And then afterwards we will uh, go over it with the paint color. Okay, so here you can see I cut off a little tiny piece of the cosmetic sponge. That's one reason I love these little sponges. I mentioned before that you can make them any size. So when you have a little bit more intricate work to do with stenciling, you can really get in there where you want the paint and also not be putting paint where you don't want it. So here I have been using that orange color that I had blended for the pumpkins that I did last week 
I've also used the Imperial Red, the Fern Green, and now I'm coming in with something called Salmon Coral. So here I go, I'm gonna go ahead and start revealing the job. And the lines are really nice and crisp, and I was really pleased with how this came out, and I'm gonna show you close up in just a minute. There you go, you can see it came out really well. So I went ahead and removed the rest of the vinyl and then I am going to go ahead and decorate these a little bit more. So just a quick reminder that if you do wanna try one of these projects or any project that I've done in the past, please feel free to share it with me. And if you'd like for me to give you a shout out on my video, I will be more than happy to do that, just like I did for Christy today. And if you also would like to share on Instagram, I can share it on my story. And if you don't even want me to share it, I would still love to see your work. So I can even give you just a, a private uh, shout out just to you. I just would love to see the work that you guys are all doing. It uh, inspires me. So. so here I'm trying to make some apples. You guys, yeah, they're very round. <laughs> I had used my little um, round foam brush and yeah. So now I've got a close up here showing you that I'm trying to make little corn on the cob. And then I'm coming in with my moss colored chalk paint to do the greenery around the corn. The other yellow that I've used was uh, Summer Porch. And these are both by Folk Art. So now I'm coming in with some more of the moss. I know it's really hard to see here, but just making little uh, leaves for what's supposed to be apples that look more like tomatoes. So now I've got these little doodads that I had taken off um, another project a few videos ago and just figured I would use them to embellish this a little bit more. So adding them onto my farm stand sign with some hot glue. And then I decided that that pumpkin just was a little bit uh, too light in color for my liking. So I'm coming back in with some of the pumpkin Waverly chalk paint. And what I thought was really cool here was that doing just the single coat, it was actually allowing all that detail to still come through. So I didn't lose any of those details. So you can kind of see them there. I thought that was great. Now here guys, I thought that my hot apple cider sign needed something. So I'm trying to draw a cup of hot apple cider. I am not an artist. <laughs> I am definitely not a fine painter. So um, hopefully you'll uh, cut me some slack on my little drawing here that I'm trying to paint. So once everything is decorated and dry, I am lining it up on my stand the way that I want it. And I'm gonna be using those little one inch screws to nail them all on. I've chosen to use just a single nail for each of these. This is supposed to be a little rustic sign. I've got the arrows pointing kind of in different directions and having just the single uh, nails will also let me kind of change those up a little bit. So here we go with the final reveal.
Okay, everybody, that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed the videos. If you did, again, please give me a big thumbs up. Make sure you give a shout out to Christy for her project and let her know she did an awesome job. And be sure to subscribe if you didn't already subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Until the next time, be well, be kind, and make it a great day. Thanks again. Bye.